So just recently, Canoe hosted an event in their new hometown of Pryor, Oklahoma. And they let the public get all up close and personal with all their modern people and stuff movers. Now, we weren't able to make it to the event, but we were able to talk to and interview several people that did make the trip. So let's find out what they had to say. So what's up motorheads and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza Gang. If you are new to the channel or you're a budding canoe head, consider tossing us a sub because we're going to keep that canoe content coming and we'd hate for you to miss out on any of that stuff. Anyway, if you're new to canoe in general, you might be asking yourself, yo, what is this sci-fi looking jelly bean? Well, it's an all electric van kind of thing, but there's also this rad pickup truck along with some commercial vans. Look. If you're interested in finding out more, we've got several videos that really take an in-depth look. So check them out. This video, however, well, it's just not one of those. So today we're gonna be focusing specifically on this event and the thoughts and opinions of a handful of people that were there in person and were able to actually sit inside of these vehicles and ask plenty of questions. These guys were kind enough to share their time and opinions and that's what this video is all about. But before we get into it, I really need to give a shout out to a couple of swell fellas that gave us much of the footage you're about to see anyway from the reddit group let's throw some love to a pair of sweet fellas named tiny fingers and pale young thank you dudes thank you thank you anyhow on to the interview so i spoke with a canoe head that was at the event that initially heard about canoe from the wall street bet subreddit of all places he was also in the market for Ford Maverick at the time, then checked out what Canoe had going on. Love at first sight, well sort of. You see, our pal here happens to live close to the mountains, so all wheel drive is sort of a must, check. Then the idea of loading up the lifestyle vehicle full of buddies and heading up into the mountains would be mega fun, especially with all the panoramic glass and openness. I mean, that's gotta be the best way to enjoy drive through the mountains, right? Anyhow, and just look, just to quote him, quote unquote, the lounge feel of the car makes it so I can, I, I can be a better host as we drive through the mountains, right on. So at this point, we started talking specifically about the lifestyle vehicle. I asked what he thought, likes, dislikes, and surprises after getting some time to actually be inside the vehicle. So the first thing we talked about was the size, you know, and our friend here is a pretty big fellow standing a full six foot two, but he had no issues with the size, even for a bigger guy as the lifestyle vehicle really just makes the best use of its entire footprint. Now, when it comes to dislikes, there really wasn't much mentioned from all the people I spoke with, but there was one point I heard from several people, and that was about the seats. I mean, somebody said, I quote unquote, I wonder how they'll be on a long drive. And if you guys express concerns about the seats being a little bit hard, and like, I'll be honest, as far as dislikes go, that was really about it. And yeah, I know this is all pre-production. This seems like something that could be easily addressed and I'm sure it will be. Also, there really wasn't much else people didn't like. Now this could be because, look, most of the people I talked to were already big canoe fans. So I wouldn't expect these opinions to be totally unbiased and we are totally fine with that. We then started talking about general layout and ergonomics. And right off the bat, here's a quote. Space-wise up front, it's wonderful. It feels like a real relaxing environment. However, I didn't see the option for multiple armrests up front, but I'm just not sure. He then went on to say, I'll quote again, as far as comfort goes, this is something I'd really enjoy riding in. And I spoke with another fellow who went on to describe just how airy and open it feels sitting up front. And I'll quote this, there's sort of glass everywhere and you can kind of see everything around you. Now, there was some questions about this jump seats that are behind the front seats and a few people I spoke with sort of wondered what was the point and they thought, well, these really shouldn't be used when the car is moving, but they did have seat belts. Anyway, so to quote one attendee, they're just sort of uncomfortable and hard, but I'm sure this is something they're gonna address. All right, so now onto the back seats and so the configuration we've all seen, you know, the wraparound restaurant booth style back seats. Well, that was the only option showcased at this event. And I spoke with a few people who got to spend a little time back there and they all found it pretty comfortable. Look, it's not huge as one person said it, and I'll quote, you'll be snuggled up if you're going three wide in the back and you might be bumping elbows, but man, it's nice to have that leg room. Yo, don't call it a yoke. 
All right, so it's not a yoke, it's still a steering wheel, although the word wheel doesn't seem to really make sense here anymore. Anyway, interestingly enough, the feedback was pretty unanimous in a positive way. Now, I wasn't able to find anybody that was able to drive a canoe, but one of the attendees I spoke with was able to talk to a VIP who got to drive one the day before. And when he asked him about the steering wheel, that test driver told him, something like it's weird for about two minutes and then it's super intuitive and you'll just kind of figure it out it's easy so the consensus was also that this thing should actually make it to production but it's look it's really unclear if i'm being honest oh another thing the driver mentioned is that the suspension seems to work a little bit differently than expected um not exactly sure what that means but we're still looking into that all right so on to the truck so there's one big thing that just about everybody pointed out, and that's the awkward amount of space behind the front seats. There's just not enough room to put seats back there, and as it was shown, there's really not much of anything back there. One attendee was curious why they didn't move that whole back closer to the front seat so you get a larger truck bed. Personally, I think there's most likely a clever design solution to make good use of that space, and they'll have a little bit of time to figure this out as the truck won't be headed to production anytime soon but expect the final version of this thing to have this thing all figured out. Otherwise, people thought it was very similar to the lifestyle vehicle on the inside. The next question I had for the group was, how did the truck look and feel? Look, while the lifestyle vehicle can maybe be described as a little cute, I think truck buyers, especially if Canoe is trying to poach customers away from the likes of Toyota or the domestic fellas, well, they just kind of want their trucks to feel tough. So the consensus was pretty positive here. And like I agree, at least from the pictures, with that raised suspension and bigger off-road tires, which give this thing an improved stance, I really don't think people in general will discount this thing as being too cute or whatever. Another thing that was news to me is that that rear window rolls down, and I kind of love that. There was also plenty of discussion about the target audience, and it really seems like Canoe's going after the, more like the Toyota Tacoma crowd, much more than the full-size like F-150, F-250, you know, giant things, which, yeah, yeah, makes sense. And then there's the multi-purpose delivery vehicle, also known as the MPDV. So I'll admit, not a ton of time was spent discussing this guy, as I doubt many of you would be all that interested in this almost exclusively commercial EV. Now, I said almost because another thing I heard plenty about was just how great this thing would be for that whole van life crowd. And it's hard not to agree. Look, people did seem to agree though that this thing's a pretty well designed and put together package. Now, as far as the people there, nothing but positive vibes and compliments. And I heard from just about everybody I spoke with that the canoe people on the ground were super nice and knowledgeable. And to quote one interviewee, they were extremely open and let people do a lot more than I thought they would. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And even Tony himself was making time to have real conversations with, you know, us regular folk. Love to see that. And this was generally the point that everybody agreed on. The canoe people on the ground were super nice and just so enthusiastic to be part of this canoe thing. It's a good sign to see that much excitement. It really is. All right, so that's, that's kind of it. And I know this is sort of a different kind of video, but we've got some other really interesting stuff in the works. So you want to hit that sub button, don't let me get in your way. Don't want you to miss out. Anyway, just wanted to thank everybody that was nice enough to carve out some time and speak with me. Much appreciated. And a special thanks again to Tiny Fingers and Pale Young for letting us use their footage and photos. Lastly, a big thanks to the Reddit group and Discord groups. If you haven't checked them out, stop by. They're just like such a, just a fountain of knowledge on this stuff. So till the next one, guys.